All right, so here we go on our lesson on solving one-step equations. We're only working with addition and subtraction equations. So after this lesson, I will be able to solve one-step addition equations and one-step subtraction equations. So first, what we need to understand is the word inverse. We'll talk about inverse operations in a minute. But the word inverse means opposite or to undo. So when you're talking about the inverse of something, it's what's going to undo something that you did, or it's going to be the opposite of something that you did. So the inverse of red would be green. Okay, or the inverse of up would be down. Okay, so again, inverse is like another word for opposite. Inverse operations, then, are operations that undo each other. All right, so the inverse operation of addition would be subtraction. And the inverse operation of multiplication would be division and vice versa. So if I multiply something and I want to undo that, I have to use the inverse operation of division. All right, so next we have the golden rule of algebra. We touched on this a little bit previously, but that golden rule of algebra is what you do to one, you have to do to the other. All right. So what you do to one, you must do to the other. This is true when it comes to numerators and denominators of fractions. This is true when it comes to the left and the right side of an equation, so on and so forth. So when we look at this, we have to think of what does an equal sign mean? Usually we just look at the equal sign meaning I'm ending a problem, I'm getting near to the end. But you have to really understand that the equal sign means that whatever is on the left hand side is the same as or has the same value as what's on the right hand side. So if I have 6 and 6, the equal sign works. If I have 2 plus 4 and I have 6 on the other side, the equal sign works. Okay, if I have 3x equals 6, I need to figure out what x is in order to make sure that both sides are equal. All right, so what we're going to talk about today is how to solve for that x when we have something like 3 plus x equals 6 or 3 minus x equals 6. And how are we going to keep the two sides equal? Or what is going to replace the x in order to keep it equal? All right, so when we talk about this, it's like keeping a scale balanced. If I have x minus 12 equals 45, Right now, what's on this side of the scale is equal to what's on this side of the scale. All right? So usually what I do, I know that to figure out what I took away from, I know that I have to do the inverse. So I would have to do the opposite. So if I took 12 away from something and now I have 45, so I know I took 12 away from something and it gave me 45. And I'm trying to find what that something is. So to do that, I use the inverse operation. And what I do is I know I have to add 12 to 45 to figure out what that x is. However, if I only do that on one side, that makes this side of the balance heavier than this side. So now all of a sudden, I've added 12 to this side, but I haven't done it over here to keep it balanced. Okay, so it's like I have an extra child on this side of my teeter-totter when over here I only have one. All right, I need to keep it balanced. So now I have x minus 12 equals 57. I haven't changed anything over here. I've just made it so now I need to figure out, okay, well if I have x minus 12 equals 57, what does x have to be? In order to do this correctly, I know that I have to undo my subtraction using addition. And what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So if I add 12 pounds, people, kittens, whatever it is, if I add 12 to this side to keep it balanced, I have to add 12 to this side. Now what ends up happening is I have minus 12 plus 12. Minus 12 plus 
plus 12 is automatically going to give me 0. Okay, because subtracting 12 gets undone by adding 12 because they are inverse operations. When it comes to addition and subtraction, inverse operations are going to get you 0. Okay, that's only addition and subtraction. And it's only if you're adding and subtracting the same number. So subtracting and then adding 12 is the same thing as changing by nothing. You don't change at all. But then over here, when I added 12, I got 57. Okay, so now I know that x, sorry, went a little too far, anything plus 0 is itself. So I know then, for this scale to be balanced, x has to be equal to 57. And then I can go back and check my work. I can put in 57 minus 12, and that should give me 45. This is just what we talked about in the first lesson, where I actually do the math and I get 45 is equal to 45. So x equaling 57 is a solution. Again, you have to make sure you're keeping that scale balanced by performing the operations on both sides. Let's take a look at this in regards to our work. Okay, so you have your first problem, x plus 87 equals 152. The operation that I'm using is addition, so to undo it, I need to use the inverse operation of subtraction. And I'm adding 87, so in order to undo that, I have to subtract 87. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I subtract 87 from both sides. And then I'm left with x plus 0 equals 65. And I know anything plus 0 is itself, so I get x is equal to 65. Let's go back and check our work. 65 plus 87 should equal 152. Double check my math, 65 and 87. 5 and 7 is 12, carry the 1. 6 and 8 is 14, plus 1 is 15, so it is that 152 is equal to 152. Let's try another one. Now I have an addition problem again, and I'm adding 18. So here I know that to undo plus 18, I have to subtract 18. But what I do to one side, I have to do to the other. So I end up with 54 is equal to 0 plus y. I know 0 plus y is always y, or the number itself. And then the only thing that I would change here is to put my to flip it and put my variable on the left and my answer or my solution on the right. And then again, I can go back and check my work. I can take 18 plus 54, and it should be equal to 72. Do the math. 8 plus 4 is 12. Carry the 1. 1 plus 5 is 6, plus 1 is 7. 72 does equal 72, so I know that my answer is correct. All right, now, the problem comes in with subtraction when we understand that since it's subtraction, to undo it, I have to use addition, so I'm going to add something to both sides. And in this case, I'm subtracting 23, so I'm going to add 23. This does not get you 46. You have to remember that you subtracted 12, so you took, I'm sorry, 23. So you took 23 away, and then you added another 23 to it. So you undid what you did originally, so that gives you 0. Okay, then over here, 9 plus 3 is 12, carry the 1. 3 plus 2 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Okay, so minus 23 plus 23 undoes itself and gives me 0. y minus 0 is going to leave me with y, and I get 62. And then I double check. 62 minus 23 should give me 39. I'm going to do the math. 63, 62 minus 23. I have to borrow. 12 minus 3 is 9. 5 minus 2 is 3. So that does give me 39, and that was what I have on the other side. So these two things are equal. All right, so what I want you to do now, I want you to go ahead and I want you to try these problems on your own and then come back and check your answer. So to solve this, I would have to subtract 1 and a half from both sides. 
And when I do that, I should have gotten 3 is equal to, I'm sorry, W is equal to 3.5. Double check my work. I do 5 and I subtract 3.5. I have to borrow. I get 5. 4 minus 3 is 1. So I know that my answer is correct. Okay, here I have h minus 1 half is equal to 3 fourths. So h minus, and I'm going to make it so my denominators are the same. So here this would be 2 fourths equals 3 fourths. So on both sides I have to add 2 fourths. And I get h minus 0 is equal to 5 fourths. h minus 0 is always h is equal to 5 fourths. I can leave it like that or I can say that it's equal to 1 and 1 fourth. Okay, now you're going to go ahead and you're going to write and solve an equation to find the measure of the unknown angle, and then you're going to write and solve an equation to find the complement of an angle that measures 92. The complement means the number that, or the complement is the number that when added to this one gives you 90. So you're looking for an answer of 90 here. If you want to, you can come back and check your equations first, and then come back and check your answers. So here I should have 65 plus x equals 90, because the complement means two numbers that when added together give you 90. And then here is 42 plus x gives you 90. All right, and if you want to, go ahead and pause and you can check your work again. So now I should have subtracted 65 from both sides. All right, when I do that, I should have gotten 25. So x in this case is equal to 25 degrees. Here I'm subtracting 42 from both sides. So this is 0 plus x equals 90 minus 42. 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. So x should be equal to 48. All right, and then here you're writing a real world problem for the equation x minus 100 equals 40. So you're trying to think of a situation where, um, and create your own word problem. We will check this in class because there are so many different options. All right, and then the last thing that I need you to do is I need you to complete your guided practice. You do not have to use the number lines, but I do want you to show all of your work and show that how you are balancing your equations. All right, as always, if you have any questions, please be sure to email me or write them down so we can go over them in class.